Now, if ever there was a debate to get me fired up, it's this one right here. It's the... It's not a sim, you can't play that. You need to play something more realistic. You can't play Forza, you can't play Grand Turismo. That debate, I hate. This one splits the community in two with just fanboys slating one another, left, right, and center, without realizing that the exact same game at the end of the day just dressed up slightly differently and targeted for a different market here or there. Whilst my main preference in gaming right now is actually iRacing, which is supposed to be the most hardcore sim of them all out there, that doesn't make me superior, better, or in any way above you guys who play a Gran Turismo or Forza. At the end of the day, we're all still sim racers doing the exact same thing, but people <laughs> want to just create this argument, they want to create this drama where one group or one community has to hate on the other for some unknown reason. In fact, some of you might have actually heard how I started that last sentence. My preference in gaming is iRacing. But Bo, you can't go calling iRacing a game! It's a game. No matter which way you cut the cookie, it's a game at the end of the day. I mean, it's a very realistic game, sure, don't get me wrong, but it's a game. Let us not forget where 90% of our sim racers who like to compete on iRacing or a set of course competizioni or a R-Factor, the so-called dominant sims, I would argue like 90% of us, we all started on a Gran Turismo. We all started on a Project Gotham Racing, a Forza, a Project Cars, something which isn't quite up to, you know, outright simulation level. That's where we all started. That's where we developed the love for what we did. That's the games that made us want to spend more time doing it invest some money into it as well because this isn't a cheap hobby either those games need to be credited so for them to just be pushed to the side by a lot of the community is rubbish then the argument comes does that mean Gran Turismo Sport is rubbish because it's not as realistic as iRacing no not at all in fact Gran Turismo Sport is one of the most competitive sim racing platforms out there and yes GD Sport is a part of sim racing even if you want to go out and call it an arcade which it's not it's still a part of sim racing, and I would argue GD Sport has done more for sim racing as an eSport, as a community, as a growth for us, everyone involved, than iRacing ever has. Sim racing as a whole would be foolish to exclude anything that wasn't hyper-realistic. The Gran Turismo, the Forzas, they're the games that build the foundation and the love of online racing, and without them, everyone loses out because there's less people competing, less people interested. If we don't treat or respect every sim racing platform and we try and bag the other ones out that we don't like everyone's gonna lose out everyone it's bad exposure in the community it's not a good look at all for people who are treating events and just destroying them in the comments those games are the ones that bring more people in they're the ones that help develop a foundation for the new sim racers coming in because at the end of the day no one is going to you know see sim racing online and immediately go spend three thousand dollars on an iRacing setup and an account and subscriptions and all the costs that come with it if we don't respect all the events that are coming in everyone loses out absolutely everyone i think back to myself like two years ago when i had a slightly worse mindset about sim racing and the v8 supercars e-series was being hosted on Forza. Every single comment, including from me at the time, was just bashing Forza because it wasn't realistic, it wasn't the best presented game, it just wasn't anything. But when sponsors come in and look at that YouTube video and they see how the response in the community is to, you know, a product and, you know, whether the sponsor should invest in that product, if all they see is hatred, we're not going to get that sponsor on for another event. We're not going to be able to get growth in the community and we're just going to keep stunting ourselves to the point where we're stuck in an endless cycle of trying to get new events to come in, trying to get new series, new broadcasters, new, you know, talent, you know, in sim racing and even new games. But if all we're going to get is criticised because it's not the game that other people want it to be, we're never going to move forward. I saw a tweet from Will Buxton like a couple of weeks ago and it was he was really really excited about the new release of the Grid game that came out, Grid 2019 or however else you want to call it, like the Grid Reboot. And when he posted that, the response he got to being supportive of Grid coming out was just 
interesting. Like, everyone else was saying, like, Will, you work in Formula 1. You should be playing the Codemasters games, which are more realistic. You know, play a real sim, play an iRacing and a set of Corsa. Any of those. Why are you spending your time on some arcade rubbish? And his reply was just brilliant. See, I always get this when I say I like Grid. But I don't want a sim. I want a game. Why? Because I'm 38 and I grew up on Mario Kart and Gran Turismo. With the 35 spare minutes I have in my life, I want to plug in and play for fun with a controller. People should not be criticised for liking a game that is slightly arcadey. It's still a part of the sim racing genre, it's part of the subculture. It should be supported and it's just another discipline of sim racing. You think to, you know, your first person shooters, the Call of Duties, the CSGOs, uh, you know, even the like RPGs or whatever you want to call it, not them RPGs, the open world shooters like a Fortnite or a PUBG. It's just different categories of sim racing and for the most part they're all relatively supported. But in sim racing, if someone goes from one eSport, like an iRacing, to an Assetto Corsa for example, the backlash is massive. Why are you playing that game? The tire model sucks and... <sighs> Come on. So from that, I want to get a couple more people's opinions. So I ended up asking on my Discord, and if you haven't joined, link in the description. Boom, get the plug in there, why not? But Riley Blythe ends up replying with, I find playing games and sims only for a length of time extremely tiring. If you take sim racing vaguely seriously, your performance will waver badly if you do not allow yourself to take a break and do something less serious every now and then. For him, this is the purpose of more arcadey games as they're still a racing game, so it's still the same ideas and concepts at play, which it absolutely is, but not requiring nearly the same amount of attention so he can effectively switch his brain off and just enjoy some good old-fashioned racing, which I think is what we all want to do. We all want to see good racing, and for me, I want to see sim racing esports, no matter what game it is pushing out front, which is currently Gran Turismo, doing well. I want to see them succeed because if they succeed, everyone else succeeds. It brings more people into the sport. It's just only a good thing. But then we also had another person reply, David Haynes, and his response was just a little bit different to Riley's again. So two different split opinions right off the bat. So David went for the approach of, for him personally, he likes the super arcadey stuff. So a Mario Kart, a Daytona USA, but he also loves iRacing, which is supposedly the king of simulators, apparently. Everything in between is either why can't this physics feel more accurate or why can't I use rocket boost and drop banana peels? Games are full in the valley between don't entertain him. So he really enjoys the arcadey stuff. So even an F1 race stars would probably be in there as well. Great game as well. But that middle ground for him. So an F1 2019, a, a race driver grid, um, you know, that type of game would not entertain him because he wants to either be hyper realistic or not at all. So he prefers that disconnect in the middle where it's either one or the other so it doesn't confuse muscle memory. It's not going from sim to sim. He prefers it's either all or nothing essentially which is an alright opinion to have. I definitely do see some arguments for that. And David is a very respected member of the community so I'm not worried about him bashing other games or anything so that's all fine. But there are those people who share David's view as well who instead of thinking about it rationally and you know letting other people enjoy some games they just want to trash it in comment sections and forums and yeah those are the type of people i highly disagree with and need to i wish they would at least reconsider how they approach talking about other games publicly because sim racing right now is very small it's in a growing stage it's picking up momentum you know porsche are now investing in the porsche esports super cup Michelin are having Michelin challenges going on and creating drivers that way. McLaren Shadow and World's Fastest Gamer were both really, really big things that are helping grow Sim Racing's exposure to the next level. And F1 Esports and the Gran Turismo World Tours are doing a brilliant job. They are really boosting the publicity of Sim Racing, which is great. So either way, our numbers are going up, which is brilliant. But the community can help as well. They can help grow Sim Racing to the next level instead of just keeping it behind with petty comments and trash talk which are always going to be a part of esports we know that there's always going to be haters there's always going to be trolls absolutely but you need to make sure that if you are passionate about this hobby if you are passionate about getting it to the next level 
Look after your competitors. I'm not just talking about the drivers you're racing against. Games 2. I'm Bo Albert. Peace out, guys.